Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I'm back out here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. And this is kind of a scrap pile of pieces from student projects, things like that during classes over the last, well, just really over the last month and a half, probably or two months. But there's a lot of good pieces in here that are fairly straight, made of arrowwood. And I've got a plan in my pocket here for a combination backpack frame and camp stool that I've kind of written out a plan for in my book. And I'm going to try to assemble that today using some of these scraps and see what I can come up with. I've never tried this project before. Something I've been thinking about for about a month. And I wrote the plans out, I don't know, two or three weeks ago and never got a chance to play with it. So today, I'm gonna to try and do that before class starts on Friday. So I'm gonna to try to find, first of all, about four pieces out of here, 30 inches long. And those are gonna be my uprights and my chair seat. And then I'm gonna get my cross members from that there's a lot more shorts in here that are straight than there are long pieces so i got to find four 30 inch pieces that are fairly straight and i want them to be you know close to three quarters of an inch in diameter because they're going to be somewhat structural when i make a chair out of it they don't need to be that heavy duty for a pack frame half inch is fine for that but since we're making this a stool we're going to need something a little bit bigger so i'm looking for stuff about three quarters of an inch so let's get started guys okay so i want four pieces of this about 30 inches long according to my plan. This one right here is barely at that 30. I mean, it's just right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the end of this off and use that piece for my guide for everything else. That one's a little crooked. Gonna have to go searching in the pile again. All right. So we got four 30 inch pieces here, or close to it. And now, what the plan is to make the initial pack frame the width of this pad. And I find the sit pad to be almost a perfect length for this. But I want about 10 inches below the bottom rung on this outside piece. Okay, so we've cut the pieces that we need to start off with. And this is just one side of the pack frame, okay? And one of these is actually a frapping stick that I picked up off the ground. Two of them are rungs. Now, what we want to do is we want to measure this pack frame's width to about the width of this back pad. I like to make my pack frames about this wide because I use this back pad on a lot of my frames just x on with paracord against my back to give me padding. You can get these things on Amazon for two or three bucks. So anyway, what we're gonna do is the plan calls for 10 inches down here for legs. So if we pull that down to 10 inches, that gives us a little bit of stick out above the pad and we'll go ahead and roll this in to this, just like that. We won't worry too much about that. And there's 10 inches to the bottom of the pad. 10 inches to the bottom of the pad. And the reason for that 10 inches to the bottom of the pad is that we're gonna put a cross member there right here on center at 10 inches. And this is gonna give us a 10 inch leg that's gonna scissor when we're done. We're gonna have another bar up here on the opposite side to lock the seat into. So once we get these in place where we want them, now we can put lashings on here to hold it in place. Now, if we didn't need the space to slide the back side of the chair into, in the end, I would notch this and lash it because that would be a good heavy duty permanent connection. However, I need that full space in here for the back side of this chair to slide into this frame. So I'm going to lash it without notching it, which means I'm gonna to have to use frappings. And that's the purpose of frappings is to tighten a lash that doesn't have notches. So we're only gonna worry about this one particular one first. And all we really need to do with that is make sure that we keep it at 10 inches on center pretty much and start our lashing. I like this number 12 really well because it really does bite down on itself good on a smaller wood. So we're going to go underneath and we're going to come around the back side and we're going to start this with a timber hitch. So we're just going to go one, two, three, four five times around. What that does, it gives us a loop here 
and when we draw this down, friction will hold this and the loop acts as a drawing down loop, okay? Now, before we go ahead and lash, we'll just go ahead and remeasure one time, make sure we're close to 10 inches on the center. Now we're going to, you see how that automatically yank that sideways? Because you've got a diagonal lash on there. Don't have a heart attack about that. Come around this thing three times, and one of those three passes is going to include that timber hitch. So we're gonna go around here three times. This will be our third time around. And once we went around three times, now we're going to come around and we're gonna change direction from underneath. And we're gonna go three times in diagonal fashion here like this. And we're keeping this fairly tight as we go, but we're not using a frapping stick yet. We'll talk about frapping sticks here in just a minute. You can see we've got a cross pattern on the back as well. Dress all of that up good. Come around this back side with our third one. Now we've got three in two different directions that make an X. Once we come around this time, we're going to come underneath in between the two sticks and that's called a frapping. And now we're gonna take a frapping stick, just something we can get a lot of tension on and we're gonna pull that line down tight. What that's gonna do is that's gonna lock that in place. And we're gonna do that same frapping three times. And every time we frap around, we're gonna grab that frapping stick and crank down on that dude as hard as we can. That's our third time around. Now, once we get our third time around on there, we're good to convince our lashing is good. We're gonna end this with a clove hitch. So we're going to come around this side. We're gonna wrap around one time, just like this. Give ourselves one solid wrap. Then we're gonna come around and we're gonna create an X, just like this. Over the top. And when we come back around, we're gonna put this tail through the X. So you just have to feed it through there just like that. When you draw that down tight, you've created a clove hitch right there. We're gonna dress that up against the backside, just like that. And again, we're gonna take that frapping stick and we're gonna get after that dude hard. We're gonna pull on that frapping stick to get that thing nice and tight. Now we can do one of two things. We can back that up with a stop knot against that clove hitch, just tie an overhand knot in this thing and run it all the way down, or we can cut that short and melt it over. I tend to like the stop knots better in case I don't have something that I can burn those lashings with, but you've got to get that stop knot right up against things in there in case it slips because then it won't ever slip. Once that stop knot's in there, it can't pull through the clove hitch. Then you can just trim off the excess and you've got your first lashing done. Now we're gonna go to the other side of this and do exactly the same thing, making sure that we have exactly the same stick out. We're 10 inches on center and we're going to lash this cross member. Okay, now we're gonna put our top outside rung on and to be able to utilize this pad, put it on the back side, which it'll be on the outside when this is done because your chair will be sitting on the inside. But to be able to utilize this pad opening for your backpack straps, these things have to line up now. Now we're gonna tie this other rung at the top. Not only do we wanna make sure that our spacing is the same so that we get a good level bar, we also wanna make sure that our width is the same. So before we draw down tight on this, we'll measure it against this frame, see how it's pulling away from the frame a little, from the pad a little bit. So we'll come over the top of this thing again, and we will, again, we'll get that timber hitch going. Start that from the inside. And we'll, as we draw that down, what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna come in here and make sure that everything is where we want it. Before we take that pad out of there and continue our lash, we've got it locked down now. 
Okay, so I put my pad back in here just to kind of keep things in perspective. Make sure I got things where I want them and everything's lined up. Now we got to put a rung on this back side here that's going to create our seat lock. And that's going to be the one rung that we have to put on this back side. What we need to do now is we need another crossbar here. And this is going to lock our chair in place. So we need enough space for this to travel between and not much more than that. And then we're ready to lash that crossbar on. Okay, so here's the concept, this being our seat. So these poles probably don't have to be as long as I've got them. But I could also go further back with these poles like this. All right. And make the seat a little more upright. I'm afraid that these two poles I've got right here aren't quite the same length on the bottom of my rungs, but they're pretty close. We can cut them later. But we need to figure out how long we want those legs so we know where to put the crossbar here and how much seat we need here to hold our tail end. All right, so proof of concept wise here, this is what we're trying to accomplish. Now we have to fit some things because we need to make sure that this crossbar that we put here that's gonna basically keep this thing from moving through here, doesn't need to be any wider than we want it because it's gonna to have to ride inside this frame when it's over with. Okay, mathematics wise, this length here to the backside of this pole to the ground has to be the same as this length right here on center. So, I'm pretty close to where I need to be right now. I just need to mark it. I need to move this one just a little shade, I think. Like that. And then I'm just going to mark this here. And here. So I know where to butt that up against to. And then my length needs to be about right here. Now I can cut that off, pull it apart, lash that up, check the fit up again. All right, so as I'm going through concept here, this is kind of what I'm after. I'm after the seat sitting inside the frame and the back pad sitting here. And we're tying stuff to these rungs and we'll have a third rung down the center. What we need to figure out is what we have to put here. And I think we need another stabilizer at least probably down in here somewhere, but it's got to slide through as well. And it's not going to slide through very well if it's sitting on top. So I've got to give that some thought for a minute. Okay. Because of the way this thing folds up, I can actually put a rung back here on the outside. I may have to trim it when I'm done, but I'm going to go a couple inches from the bottom and I'm going to tie another rung in here to give this stability side to side. All right, so we tied the back rung on, folded it up. So now, to unfold it, it has to come up this way. No, it has to go backwards. It has to go back down that way and fold. This goes all the way down to here. Fold it this way. Okay, yeah. All right, again, proof of concept here. Not a perfect model, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So now, let's put a seat on here. Another rung here. Those are the next two steps. Okay. We have a design flaw we have to figure out here real quick. I think I have the solution, but I want to talk through it. Don't mind making mistakes on videos. I mean, this is a concept. So in order for this to fold, we want a third rung on this backpack. In order for this to fold, those legs have to go underneath that third rung because if not, they'll block the legs. So what we can do is we can move this up, and put our second rung about right here, about that high. 
We can put our second rung there and our third rung up here, which will be a little uneven spacing wise, but that's not a big deal because this has to slide underneath everything. And to do that, it has to fold right there and it can only go this high before it folds because that's how the chair unfolds to begin with is like that and sits inside. So our second rung here would block these legs folding up. We can use that for a measure of where our rungs can be. And these legs aren't the same length either. So we'll go ahead and take care of that as well. We're at 12 on center there, 12 and a half on center there. This leg's a half an inch longer. We'll go ahead and cut that off now. That'll give us a little bit more space to put that rung. Put rung, one rung right above that and one with just about an inch of stick up at the top. Okay. And now we've got that retied. Now we're back to, okay, we have a pack frame here that's got one, two, three rungs on it. We have a seat here that folds into the pack frame. Comes all the way down, folds inside, goes up underneath, and I'm not so sure about that one lashing right there. Maybe redoing that. This, and again, we've got the problem of uneven sticks. All right, so I've cut the slats for the seat now. I have not lashed them in because that's gonna be a little bit of an arduous task and I've put a lot of work into this already. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try to sit in it. I have folded it up. It does work in the folded position with these slats in place. They're the right length. So I'm going to sit in it now and see if it's gonna try and throw me a break. And if it doesn't do either one of those things, then we'll go ahead and lash the bad boy up. All right, so we're sitting in it. Now, no matter whether we can sit back. Hey, that's not too shabby. That ain't too bad at all, really. Okay, so I'm getting ready to tie these rungs in, and I'm starting an X pattern. I just started with an arbor knot, made an X. So every X is going to end. You're going to come over the top, just like that. Underneath, you're going to put another rung in, and come over the top of it and down in between, and then back over. This time you're gonna come underneath the rung, like this. Pull it down tight and come down on top of it, just like that. So you've got X after X after X, underneath and up, keeping everything pulled tight along the way. Another rung. And again, over the top first, Underneath, X over the top, back underneath. Don't worry too much about the other side right now. Just keep these as tight as you can get them. X over the top, underneath, X over the top and underneath. Pull it tight. Go to the next one. X over the top and underneath. Across over the top and underneath. X over the top and underneath. This is where it's gonna get a little fiddly. Have to kind of pull things tight as you go. And this is where you're going to tie off at, right here. Okay? And you kind of got the rest of this thing in your way a little bit. You might have stand it up on the side to do this. <clears throat> now you can come over to this side here and just cross it over. You can tie another clove hitch right there to tie everything off. All right, once we got that, Done. Now we pretty much have a finished chair here, as far as that goes. 
so we know that the chair is good. We've sat in it already. So now let's get this thing set up in a pack frame, make sure it folds up right. When we get it set up in a pack frame, we'll trim these tags off and uh, see what we can do from there. Now the key with this folding down is that this whole seat folds inside this and can rise up above it and slide over the top of that rung just like that. Once we got get to that point, then all we have to do is even it out. Now, because they put this seat on here, when we put this back pad on here, look at that. That thing is just perfect. Now, our backpack ropes will go through here, and the majority of the weight on the lower back will be right here on that seat. And the back side of this, we can tie our load to. And in position to wear, strapped on with just a set of one inch tubular webbing like we use that in a lot of our classes. And this upper frame area would be the place you'd put like some kind of a poncho roll or something like that. And then your lower portion would be possibly your tarp wrapped up. And we'll go ahead and put something on the pack frame as well here in a few minutes. But I wanted to show you what it looked like in and of itself. Okay, guys, listen, full transparency here. I'm kind of running out of daylight, running out of time. To be honest with you, I got a lot of stuff I've got to do today. I got a class prep I got to take care of tomorrow. I've got a class starting this weekend again. But all in all, you know, there it is. So we've got a seat, we've got a pack frame, all made into one piece. The concept is definitely proven. I sat in a chair, I put the pack frame together. I mean, it's pretty simple to load something on here and lash it to a lash point. I've done videos after video on things like that on ladder back pack frames. And that's pretty much what this is based on. So the concept is no different than that other than the fact that now we have a camp stool incorporated in our pack frame. Listen guys, I really appreciate you joining me today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. For all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, friends, I'll try to get this video up today and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.